like that and uh, I think now it's all good. So uh, you guys probably didn't hear when I said about the, the PDF. So the screen that you, you're seeing here is going to be uh, a PDF that I'm going to create tonight. And I'm going to talk about documentation, experiences, English test, academic evidences, work evidences, mental preparedness, financial preparedness, learning events, and then uh, some other question answers. And I'm going to post this PDF in my Telegram group. So I'm just going to, to write in here. Uh, I will post the PDF document in my Telegram group and the PDF will be protected by a password. Uh, the password will be revealed in the end of the live session. Obviously, uh, you need to be with me until the end so you know the, the password. And also for me to put the, the PDF in the Telegram group, I would like to have a little bit of interaction with you guys. I actually put in my Instagram. Uh, you don't need to do now, but um, you will see that my last post in Instagram is this one last few hours that's my last post in Instagram and uh, when you open up the description there is a question there so uh, I will see towards the, the live session how many people have got live with me and I will be asking you guys to there's a question in the description and I would like you to put in the comments uh, to answer that question. So if you guys can answer the question and then I can see the engagement there, I will post the, the PDF, this PDF that I'm going to prepare, I'm going to post in my Telegram group. Some could be asking, yeah, Jason, but I actually, I actually don't have a, uh, your, your Telegram group. So if you don't have my Telegram group yet, uh, if you haven't joined the Telegram group yet, that's the name, Engineering Qualification Validation, and this is the link, this is the link for the Telegram group. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to paste this in the Facebook, and also going to paste this in um, YouTube. Unfortunately, I cannot really paste that in uh, in the in Instagram. So you have to kind of type in, or if you have Telegram, you just need to search for engineering qualification validation and join join my my group. All right, um, so that's, that's how we're going to, to work the, the interaction. Uh, and I'm really happy that uh, I'm here to share with you what I think it's important for you to be in your checklist in preparation for your validation process in 2021. And please note that this checklist is based on my own experience with the process and also based on many applications that, I, that I've seen already so uh, so let's start with uh, with the checklist so in terms of documentation so documentation is certainly very important for you to start thinking about and as I said if I'm looking a little bit to the side it's because I'm typing and unfortunately my typing I need to to look uh, just to make sure that I'm typing correctly so and, and if, if you, you have, have any questions, question, please, please put in the, the comments, comments and I'll be checking the, the comments uh, sporadically so I can uh, answer some of the questions as well. So in terms of documentation, what are the important things that needs to be in your checklist? 
The first thing is uh, a recent color photo. And when I talk about recent, uh, the booklet says that recent means that uh, a photo that was taken in the last six months. So obviously it needs to be uh, fairly recent. Uh, the other document that is important is your identification, identification document. And this identification document can be your passport or can be also your national identity card. So passport or uh, national identity card. Uh, it's important to highlight that uh, if your national identity card is not in English language, uh, it's got to be translated as well. So translated uh, if not in English language. Uh, another important document that you will need to prepare for your validation process is your curriculum. Curriculum vitae or your resume. So that's also a very important document that you need to prepare and put together for your validation. And also if you have changed your name, then you need to provide a change of name document. So I'll put in here change name document if you have changed your name. So in terms of uh, documentation, and this is documentation in regards to your personal infor information. And remembering that all of these documents, they are in the they are in the, in the booklet, Migration Skills Assessment Booklet. So what's going to be in our PDF as well? In terms of experiences, uh, as you probably know, uh, or if you don't know even, for you to validate your qualification, you need to write three career episodes. And the career episodes, they need to be based on engineering experience. They can be engineering experience from your university, or they can be from en uh, engineering experience from your work. So in terms of experiences, what are the important things that needs to be in your checklist so you can prepare yourself for your validation process? So the first thing that I encourage you guys to do is to do a brainstorming activity. So start thinking about what are the things that you did as an engineering student and what were the things that you did as an engineer after graduation. So list, list of your uh, engineering experiences. And also, uh, as I said, both academic and work experience. And also in terms of experience, it's very important for you to start thinking about and gathering uh, the supporting documentation, like pictures, photos, diagrams, tables, uh, calculation formulas, AutoCAD drawings, testing results, software outputs, technical manuals, other perhaps articles that you developed and so on. So when you are referring to those things in your career episode, it's very important that you actually include those as evidences or as supporting documentation. So I'll write that, supporting documentation, uh, like pictures, photos, diagrams, tables, calculations, formulas, AutoCAD, Drawings, testing results, software, outputs, uh, technical manuals, developed, uh, and so on. And also important thing about uh, experiences 
especially if you're writing about uh, your academic experience. If you, let's say, for example, that you chose a subject assignment uh, when you were studying at the university. So it's really important uh, that you try to think where is the final report or where is the report that you did. So it could be the final course uh, assignment or thesis if you did a, a master's degree uh, and also academic reports of subject assignments. So those things are certainly very, very important that you can demonstrate. The next bit is about uh, English test. So uh, obviously, when you do your English test, you have three options. You have the option of doing IELTS, you have the option to do TOEFL, uh, ITB, I think that's how they say, and obviously the PTE academic uh, results as well. So you certainly got to have your chain or checklist, the, the results of those English tests showing at least the minimum scores for each of the four bands, reading, listening, uh, writing and speaking. So this is very important to be in your checklist. So IELTS, uh, TOEFL or uh, PTE uh, results showing at least the minimum score for each of the four bands which are reading, listening, writing and speaking. And also you've got to remember that uh, those English tests they cannot be older than two years on the date of your application. So if today they are less than two years old but then let's say that uh, you wait until six months from today and in the meantime it expires, it's then more than two years. So it's important to note that uh, the two years uh, old is on the date that you make your application uh, to Engineers Australia. So I'll put it there so you don't really forget about it. So it needs to be less than two years old on the date of your EA application. And some, some people, people they ask me questions as well about um, uh, but what if I don't really get uh, in one band the minimum score? Can I do the other test, another test and submit the two tests? And the answer is yes, you can provide two exams if you need to combine those two exams to demonstrate the minimum score in all four bands. But both exams need to be from the same test type, uh, which means, for example, two tests from IELTS or two tests from TOEFL or two tests from PTE. And both they need to be less than two years old as well. So I uh, will write in that because it's, it's very important. So you can, you can provide, I'm just going to put it a little bit to the top, you can provide two exams uh, if you need to combine exams to demonstrate the minimum score uh, in all four bands, both exams need to be from the same test type and less than two years old. All right, uh, and just remembering that uh, uh, the PDF of this checklist, I will be posting in my Telegram group uh, when I have a little bit of interaction, engagement with my last post. So this is my last post here, and uh, the post, it's got a description, 
uh, in the description there is a question there. So if you could answer the, that question in the in the comments, uh, will they, when, when I have a little bit of uh, engagement with that uh, post, I uh, will be placing the the PDF in my Telegram group. So if you don't if, if you don't really have if you're not really part of the Telegram group, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, I put the link in the comments. Uh, if you are in Instagram, uh, this is the link there. I'm just not sure how I can how I can actually uh, put that in the comments in Instagram. So you have to pretty much type that in, and then you can join the engineering qualification validation. Uh, group in Telegram, and then you will be able to access that. And the, and the PDF is going to be protected by a password, where which I'm going to reveal towards the end of the live session. So those ones attending the live the live session will have the privilege to get the password and download the the PDF with this checklist here. All right. Uh, the other item that it's important to be in your checklist is about your academic evidences. So you gotta make sure that you don't forget to have your academic degree certificate. So academic uh, degree certificate. I'm just going to format the same. So it keeps the same format. And so that's your bachelor degree certificate. And also any other post-graduation certificates and your academic transcript and uh, perhaps your course syllabus, they could be requested by Engineers Australia. They usually don't request, but uh, potentially they could if when they analyze the, the curriculum of your course, if when they analyze with the curriculum of the similar course here in Australia and they don't really have a lot of uncertainty, they might ask you a copy of the course syllabus of your course so they can make sure that uh, the course is equivalent to the course here in Australia. So academic degree certificate, uh, any post-graduation uh, certificates, and your uh, obviously academic uh, transcript, and potentially the course uh, syllabus uh, could be requested by Engineers Australia. It could. I'm not saying that it will, but it could. Uh, what else is going to be important to be in your checklist? Your, uh, it's about your work evidences. Just going to check if is there any question there. Uh, no, there's no question on Facebook. Uh, there's no question on YouTube. All right. So we'll keep going with work evidences. In terms of the work evidences, it's certainly very important uh, to get a reference letter from your employer or former employer. And when do you need that reference letter? Well, you need that reference letter if you used a work experience in your career episode. And also, if you, in your uh, CV or curriculum vitae or resume, if you include there that uh, you worked as an engineer for more than 12 months in the same company, you need to have a reference letter as well. And also, obviously, if you apply for RSEA, the Relevant Skilled Employment Assessment, uh, you need to have a copy of your reference letter. So I'm going to put that information in because it's really important. Uh, you've got to have your reference letter uh, from your employer or former, obviously, employer if you're not working there anymore. Uh, if you used a work experience in your career episodes and also 
if you include it in your CV that you that you performed uh, engineering work for more than 12 months in a company and or if you are applying for the RSEA which is the, the relevant skilled employment assessment I don't know why it's not formatting so I'll, I'll highlight everything so it formats everything all right uh, the other topic that I, I put in there uh, it's not quite in the in the booklet but I think it's very important for you guys to be uh, to have in your checklist because you've got to be mental prepared so mentally you've got to be very well prepared for your validation process although the validation process is a simple process but it's not easy and why do I say it's simple it's simple because it's just six steps when you go to the booklet uh, there are just six steps for you to validate your qualification here but unfortunately uh, it's not easy because you have to organize a lot of things you've got to gather documentation you've got to get your evidences uh, you've got to write your reports you've got to write your career episodes you've got to write your cpd you've got to write your summary statement and uh, and you've got to pass the english test as well so uh, it's not easy unfortunately although it's simple but it's not easy so you've got to be mentally prepared and I thought about a few things that perhaps would be really important to be in the, in the checklist. So the first thing is a question actually. Are you mentally ready for the challenge? So that's a question that you've got to answer very honestly to yourself. Are you mentally uh, prepared for the challenge so certainly uh, you've got to be determined you've got to be ready and you've got to be focused uh, to do your validation process the other thing that I thought about was for you to list all the other competing priorities so list all other competing priorities and you are the only one that will be able to write what are the other competing priorities and some of the examples of these competing priorities you may laugh or not but uh, the competing priorities usually they are work they are study they are leisure uh, Netflix Facebook, Instagram, PlayStation, and so on. So there are many other competing priorities. And, and why do I say that? And why do I list Netflix and Facebook, Instagram, PlayStation, YouTube, whatever? Because WhatsApp even, uh, put here WhatsApp. Uh, how much time do we spend on, on WhatsApp today? because for you to do your validation process you will need time and everything else then that uh, you need to share your time your spare time is a competing priority so you need to be able to list all of those competing priorities and make sure that uh, which one are you going to prioritize also it's important to list all the roadblocks you need to remove what are the things that are preventing you to advance with your validation so you need to understand what are the blockages so you can prioritize the validation process if that is your priority of course so list the the roadblocks you need to remove so you can 
prioritize the validation process. Another important thing is if you have enough support from your family, your partner, friends, uh, your share, your share mates, because if you have support, it's always going to be a little bit easier. There will be times that you get stuck. You will get just, you just cannot go forward. And in these times, you will need to talk with your friend, you need to talk with your family, you need to talk with your partner, uh, talk to somebody to kind of uh, help you to get unstuck. So, do you have support from your family, partner, friends, share makes. And also important thing that you need to probably exercise is time management. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of things that you'll be competing with your time. So you need to exercise time management, prior prioritize the activities you will put an effort in. And another important thing that mentally you need to be prepared as well. Uh, when I thought about this, I didn't. I was going to create a new category, but I think it uh, it falls within the the mental preparation, which is to have a migration plan. So for that, it's very important for you to consult a registered migration agent and put together a migration plan. I've seen so many people that they spent and wasted a lot of time and money because they didn't have a migration plan and they were just kind of uh, trying to do whatever they, they could do uh, without really having a good direction, a good plan. And after a few years, they realized that uh, everything that they studied or in everything that they did uh, didn't really quite help in their migration plan. And they don't really have any other option, but uh, once they finish their studies to go back to their home country. So it's really important for you to be mentally uh, in peace with your plan to have a migration plan. So have a migration plan. And for that, I suggest you to consult a registered migration agent and put together a migration plan to maximize your time in Australia and minimize the waste of time and money and, I would say, frustration. The more you get frustrated, obviously, uh, lower is going to be your mental health for the validation process, obviously. All right, uh, the other thing that I think it's quite important for you guys to, to think about is to have financial preparedness. And what do I, 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 I mean about that, financial preparedness? First, you've got to put together a budget for the validation process. So put together a budget for the validation process. You need to understand how much you will need to spend on English tests, translations, courses. Obviously, if you need to improve your English level, you may need to, to, to study English. Uh, you need to think about your visa fees, if you need to renew your visa, if you're, doing, if you're applying for a new student visa, you need to renew that. Uh, if you need some mentoring, for example, I offer a mentoring, a paid mentoring program. Uh, if you need to if you're considering to be part of my mentoring program, you need to uh, certainly put that in your budget. Uh, extra time in Australia, when you have extra time, you have costs with uh, accommodation, food, uh, tickets, and leisure, and everything else. So you need to 
understand how much you will need uh, to spend on English test test or tests if you actually have to do a few more more than one translation uh, translations uh, courses uh, courses if you if you need to improve your English level uh, what else uh, visa fees mentoring investment extra time in Australia uh, in terms of accommodation uh, food leisure etc in terms of financial preparedness as well uh, it's certainly important to, to think about and to list the things that can consume your money and then you need to prioritize them so a lot of things can consume your money your money and not help you in your budget so if you if you list that you're going out every week you're having takeaway three times a week uh, you're going to the movies three times a month or whatever you're traveling every month so you need to list all the things that can consume money and then you need to prioritize sometimes people say that uh, they don't really start the validation because they don't have money uh, sometimes they really don't but here in australia you probably do it's just uh, your priority is different if you prioritize your validation you're certainly going to perhaps not do a few things that will be consuming your money and you will be prioritizing the validation process. So list the things that can consume your money and prioritize them. All right. Uh, the other thing about uh, I'll just double check the, if I've got any comments in, uh, in the Telegram group, uh, sorry, in Instagram, in the post. Remember that uh, I will make available this PDF in the Telegram group. If I have uh, some interaction here in my Instagram post, the last post here, if I don't have any comments there, unfortunately, I'm not going to place post this uh, PDF in my Telegram group. So this is the last post. Uh, if you want to have the PDF available for you guys to download, uh, you need to put some comments in the last post that I did in my profile. So, all right, so keep going. In terms of learning events, what are the things that you need to have in your checklist in terms of your learning events? So first you've got to list, you've got to have a list of your CPD, your continuing professional development. So list of uh, your CPD, continuing professional development. And you've got to also list and got to think about all the learning events that have occurred after your graduation. Remember that the CPD is just after your graduation. So you've got to have your learning events that have occurred after your graduation. Uh, and that includes post-graduation studies, uh, conference, uh, sorry, conferences, seminars, uh, workshops, technical visits, technical inspections, seminars, I already put seminars there, uh, technical meetings or presentations. And also uh, short courses, 
in volunteer engineering work if you've done as well or even private studies they all can count uh, towards the towards your CPD uh, what else do we need uh, here so let's have a quick recap of the, the main points in the checklist documentation, personal information, experiences experiences uh, either uh, putting here academic or work English test academic evidences work evidences mental preparedness financial preparedness, learning events, post-graduation studies, question and answers, yeah. All right, yeah, so if you guys have any particular question, I, I'm more than happy to, to address those questions. If you, if you have any question, I'll just double check in Facebook, in YouTube, and Instagram, if I have any question there. Um, no, I don't really have any question there. You guys are a little bit shy today. So, yeah, let's have a look. And I'm going to wait until probably 10 p.m. so I can kind of uh, see if I've got any any comments in here uh, again that's my last post in instagram and there's actually a question in my in the description of the post if you can answer that question i will then release the this pdf here uh, i'm actually going to create a pdf with the checklist and I'm going to protect it, I'm going to give you the, the password and uh, you will be able to, to download in my Telegram group. And remember that in about three hours time or two and a half hours time, I'm going to be closing the online mentoring program, Validation Formula, uh, the last group of 2020. And uh, for the next two and a half hours, you can still enjoy the special discount and the nine bonuses. And remember, they're just the bonuses. They're worth $1,300 and you're going to get uh, that for free as part of the mentoring program. The mentoring program is just $697 Australian dollars uh, and that is closing tonight. So I've got already a few students that they enrolled uh, this week. And tomorrow I'm going to be releasing the, the video classes for them. I included them already in my VIP group in Telegram. And uh, I'm going to start working with them from tomorrow uh, in guiding them to get a very strong CDR so they can join the other seven students of mine that they have been approved already by Engineers Australia. All right, so I'm going to create this PDF. Uh, so you guys can see that I'm actually creating the, the PDF, really. So Microsoft, I'm going to print this. Uh, where I'm going to, to print this? I'm uh, just going to print that in the documents there. So I'm going to put live 77, which is this live 77. Uh, checklist for uh, 2021. Create PDF. So uh, I am create. I have created this PDF, and now I'm going to show you that I'm going to protect that. In I use this. I, I don't know if you guys use this one, but uh, I use this software here. Uh, so where is that? Uh, Live seventy seven. So. What's going to be the, the password? Uh, so the password is going to be checklist. 
So check list 2021. So I'm going to repeat that. Check list 2021. Oh, they don't match. So I will redo it. So all small letters. Check list 2021. Check list 2021. Yeah, they match. And then I'm going to protect. Uh, PDF files have been protected. I'm going to download the protected PDF. So uh, I'm going to open the PDF and I'm going to put the password. Check list 2021. Okay. Yeah, it opened the, the PDF. So the password is working. So uh, I'm going to place the, this PDF here in my Telegram group uh, when I have some uh, interactions in my last post of the... I'm going to show you here, guys. Uh, Instagram.com uh, I'm going to put in my uh, Chrome, I think. So I'm going to I gotta do a lot of muck around. So again, my last post in Telegram is this one there, and uh, there is actually in the description there is a question. So if you answer that question in Instagram, I'm then going to put uh, this PDF in Telegram. If you don't do it, unfortunately, you will miss out the, the, the PDF. And again, the password to open the PDF is all in small letters. Checklist 2021. I actually got a question here on Instagram. Uh, it says here, Rafael is asking, uh, Gerson, what if I develop my career in a area role different than my graduation area? Yeah, that's a very common question, uh, Rafael. And it, the answer is depends. Uh, depends if your work experience is, although it's different from your graduation, but uh, it's kind of a sort of a related area. So you could apply, let's say for example, that uh, you graduated as electrical engineer and your experience is in electronics engineer. So you can apply, if you're using your work experience as an, an electronic engineer, you can apply to be approved as electronics engineer and then base your career episodes as electronics engineer. Uh, what you probably cannot really do is for you to apply as electrical engineer, for example, and then use your experiences as electronics engineer. So that's not going to work. So you just got to be careful with that, that uh, whatever you apply when you're selecting the ANZ SEO occupational code, it needs to reflect what you're writing in terms of your experience. Okay, um, so I'm going to wait until 10 p.m. to have uh, to have a look at my last Instagram post, uh, and you can go to Jerson Ida as my last. Uh, uh, as my profile, where is that? Uh, and oh, where is that? Uh, I cannot really get rid of this. So you can go to Jerson Ida, which is my profile, and then leave your comments answering the question that's in the description, and then I will uh, post the, the PDF in my Telegram group. And don't forget that I. Uh, for the next two and a half hours, 
you still have the, the chance to be part of my last mentoring group for this uh, calendar year, 2020. And uh, I will be closing the enrollments midnight tonight. And um, perhaps I'll be opening new groups next year. Depends how everything goes. So if I don't really have any more questions, I would like to, to thank you guys very much. And remember, uh, the PDF in Telegram, if I post in there, the password is going to be checklist2021, uh, all in small letters. I would like to, to thank you guys very much, and I'll see you next Sunday, 8.30 p.m. Brisbane time. See ya, and bye-bye.